picture the scene, you're going out for a ride, it's dark, you're on your own, you're in the middle of nowhere, a little bit worried about what happens if you were to have an accident. Well, worry no longer, because Real Rider have addressed your concerns with their Real Rider crash detection app. Now, Real Rider have been a sponsor on the channel for a couple of months now, and I've been using the app for a couple of months and been really impressed with it, but I haven't, I haven't tested it because I haven't crashed. So I, I wanted to go and find out a little bit more about the app, how it works. So I met up with Andrew, who is the uh, the the inventor. Well, he's he, he's the product developer for Real Rider. We sat down, had a chat to see how it worked and what it was all about. Dropsy, roll the intro. ambulance service here. We've had a real rider alert to say that you've had a crash. Are you all right? Um, I've come off my bike. I've really hurt my leg. Do you know where you are at the moment? Not exactly. I was travelling from Hemsley to Stokesley. I've actually just received your exact location. We're getting help arranged for you. OK, thank you. So we've come down to Ducati UK to have a chat with Andrew Richardson. Now, Andrew, you're the CEO, or the, what's your title, yeah, special title the, of yeah, this? Co-founder. Co-founder. Yeah, yeah. Co-founder of the Real Rider app. So just to go through some details, I know there's been a lot of questions um, from subscribers asking, how does it work? You know, does it record speed data, that sort yeah. of thing. So, so first of all, can you just tell us a little bit about how it all came about? Yeah, um, back in sort of uh, late 2016, um, really, we, we made some films for... Uh, the then high was in seat about motorcycle safety um, and part of that section was crash scene management what happens if okay. you come around a corner and there's, there's a crash motorcycle and because we worked with the air ambulance at the time they kept telling us how they would land the aircraft and couldn't find the rider rider had been thrown um, didn't know anything about the rider the rider was unconscious um, and it was one of those kind of moments where you think well hang on a minute how, how can we kind of create something to, to solve that problem where do you find the rider in the first place and no medical information means they, they don't know what to treat at, at, you know, yeah, the, yeah, at, the, course, at the side yeah. of the road. Um, so when smartphones finally came out, um, we started looking at the technology and looking at accelerometers and GPS. Um, so this was kind of around 2010, 2011, oh, wow. really, really yeah, early, yeah, early on. on in, this, yeah. in the grand scheme of what's out now in terms of technology, you know, and, and you know, the use of GPS in location technology, we were doing it way, way, way back. Yeah. Um, but the first thing we, we did is we went to the air ambulance and said, look, this is what we can do. And I always remember the pilot saying, if you can tell me where the rider is, I'll lend the helicopter near to the rider as possible. Um, and that's kind of where it started. And we then went to the Northeast Ambulance Service. Um, somebody made an introduction and said, look, this is what we want to do. And it really kind of snowballed from there. Yeah. And this you know? wasn't necessarily motorcycles at this time? It was, was purely it? motorcycles, oh, yeah, because really? okay. our specialism, I mean, um, you know, we, we, at the time I was involved in motorcycle safety, uh, had been for, for a number of years, so we knew the, the challenges for finding riders, riders being thrown from bikes, those kind of things, but we didn't probably fully appreciate the, the massive issues for paramedics, right. um, particularly if you've got a rider who's unconscious and you don't know whether they're latex intolerant or you know, what blood group, those kind of things. Um, but although we created the basis of the technology, we could detect the impact. It was like, well, what does the emergency services want? Uh, and that's where talking to the North East Ambulance Service control room and the paramedics, um, they were like, well, look, if you can send us information that you know, we know is trusted and it's been validated, then we can use that to send paramedics to the location. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of where it started. And we started really refining what we were doing, working on 
you know, how could we connect this to the to the BT system? Um, that was kind of a long journey yeah. um, to be able to achieve that. So how do you do it? Because that, so I guess a lot of people, and myself included, you're a little bit worried about the whole false alarm thing, because the last yeah, thing you want yeah, is them yeah. calling you back, you know, yeah, yeah. wasting their time. Yeah. So how do you sort of minimise? How, how do you do that? It was, um, it was really interesting in the early days, because um, impact protection is one thing, um, but validation's um, probably more important. Yeah. So how do we validate there's been a crash? How do we prevent false activations? How do we prevent the thing from going off if I... You know, if yeah. I, I've got my system running now, yeah. but it's already paused because we use we created something called auto pause. So if I shake the phone and throw it on the floor, it won't go off. Right. But in the early days, we had guys coming back from rides, and you know, you give instructions, you need to pause it or turn it off. You, you don't remember. Well, that, you don't do you? know. No, if it's a manual thing. So exactly. I remember the early days. Um, you know, you, you've got your jacket pocket. You get home. You've been on a big ride. You've had ten gallons of coffee. Straight to the toilet. And what we were finding is that they were throwing the jackets on the floor and it was processing, sending the alert. Uh -huh. Then they would come downstairs and there was a phone call for yeah. emergency service. Because they always been ring. ambulance at the door. No, 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 <laughs> there's, 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 there's these validation processes. Oh, okay. So, and I'll, I'll talk a bit about how that works, but there's always a number of calls to the phone to validate and to see if anyone's okay and, right. and so forth. So we found out early on that people were ignoring <laughs> the instructions and we had to think of how we could create some technology to, to um, stop that. Right. So we created autopause uh, really early on. Uh, and that was really important because, you know, you turn it on. I, I get my gear on every day, um, turn my me, me headset on, um, turn real rider on. Um, and it's on, but it's not actively monitoring until it knows I'm riding. Yeah. And that kind of comes into how we monitor the GPS points and we determine how, how you're moving within a threshold. It's a speed threshold. Um, so we know that if you're going over a certain speed, it'll actively monitor the system. And when you drop below that, it'll turn off. But people then think, so are you recording the speed? No, there's yeah, a difference yeah, between yeah. recording speed and monitoring GPS, um, GPS points. Because every GPS point will tell you how quick you're going. Yeah. So we use that to determine whether we need to be actively monitoring the phone or not. But you don't actually record that. Well, yeah, that's, that's the important and, and thing, isn't it? You know, I'll, whenever I meet anybody and they say, "All right, oh, you ride this, do you?" Well, yeah, you know, I ride, yeah. I, I make progress. I've done all my advance and everything else. And you know, we wouldn't create a system that would record that. And it's, yeah. we don't need to. We're not a performance app. Yeah. It's about if you have an off, and ninety percent of of motorcycle crashes will involve a rider being thrown from the motorcycle. Yeah. It's the very nature of what we're doing. And um, how quickly can we identify? check if, if, the, if the rider needs some assistance, which again I can talk about, and then how quickly we can get that to the yeah. services. Yeah. That's sort of a big worry for some people with, with it, the whole speed and all oh, about that sort of data protection. Yeah, and, and, and well. you know, we, we the, the thing is, when you, when you create something and you work with emergency services, and you know, certainly when we started working with the NHS is that we don't store any of the medical information anywhere. Right. We weren't allowed to, um, and we didn't want that responsibility. So when you set it up, your, your medical information is stored in the phone. So we don't keep a record of that. Ah, okay, so, so it's personally stored on your exactly. device, sort of thing. Yeah. You know, we, 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 when GDPR came out, we were we were com fully compliant with with that. Um, and when the alert is sent, um, and we have a, a you know an international emergency alert and cloud infrastructure, which is pretty fast, it's sent transiently. Right. So it basically goes into the say the UK. If you crashed anywhere in the UK, um, it will go straight into the BT nine 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 service into their, their their where cars go into if you like their data set. And it's, it goes in there within milliseconds. Right. But the important thing is they know exactly where you are, so they'll direct that to the nearest ambulance service to where you are. That's the whole point of the system. You're not sharing the data with the police, you know, no. the insurance companies, you know, that, that's, that's not no, what you're and it's, it, was, it, was never, it was never something that we wanted to do. You know, I, think, I think what's changed massively with the new real rider and, and some of the other services that we plug into is we're now international. Um, and people don't know that. So if you rode from here and you went all the way to southern Spain, oh, really? the Covered. system is completely active. Um, so that if you crashed southern Spain, it will still alert the piece at the public service answering port in southern Spain through our international partners. Oh, wow. And that's kind of people don't know that. Yeah. And you know, people say, well, if I'm going out on a ride, I might be local, someone might find me. Yeah, but the further away from your hook you are from home. You know, exactly. the, more the more vulnerable you are, yeah, you know? Exactly. I mean, you've only got to be riding at night in the dark. Exactly. I mean, if you go off the road, country rain at night, yeah. no one's going to find you, no one's going to see you even, you know. And, so. and, and, and that's the, the, be the beauty of our technology is that it immediately does a geo lookup of where you are. Um, it sends the 
the location, the precise location. So we use the satellite data. We've won satellite competition, um, European satellite competition, you know, uh, because of our use of, of downstream data. So we know where you are. We know which direction you were traveling. We send that data. We know your bike details, your medical information, if you want to share that information. Um, you know, and the timestamp, your mobile number, who you are. Once that's packaged up and sent to the nearest ambulance service, their duty is to call um, and to see if you respond. Because every, every crash is different. If you've come off your bike and you might be temporarily unconscious, we do what we do. They ring you and then you answer the call, then they'll triage because yeah. they'll know exactly where you are. Yeah. And I think what, what frustrates me, certainly when we talk about this on social media, is all oh, ambulance won't turn up for days. And, you know, and it's like, hang on a minute, this is, this is going into an emergency service uh, you know, framework of which they will, they will find the nearest and most appropriate yeah. service. So is it the same as someone physically calling 999? You know, is, it, is the response the same or is so it like a different system? We, the way that we, the agreement when we first created um, the technology is that we would be ambulance only. So a lot of your car technology, your telematics services would go to the police. Right. But the agreement nationally for us, because we did like a two year pilot, we got government approval to do what we, 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 we do. So we're the only service that's allowed from an app perspective to connect to 999 oh, really? in the UK. Okay. Yeah, wow. um, so we have um, accreditation for that, which is highly regulated and we have to go through compliance and all sorts of things. If you crash, you get up and walk around, we know you're walking around because we monitor yeah. lots of software within, within your smartphone. So we won't alert, because if you can walk around, you can call for help. Yeah, yourself, yeah, yeah. So, it may, yeah. so your 999 call, they'll know where you are anyway yeah. with advanced mobile location. But if you can't call for help, we know because we've been analysing and monitoring your phone, we've also put an alarm on the phone. So if you don't cancel it within a certain period, then we, we, will, we will send it as quickly as we can. can. Crash detection is one thing, validation is another, but then yeah. it's the emergency framework that we've got that covers yeah. across North America, Australia, New Zealand, yeah. Europe. That's a 365-day service. It's always on, and it's always about if something happens, we'll get that alert through as quickly as we can. Yeah. But in the meantime, we have all these validations as well, and that last validation from the emergency service, who will then call you. So it's a tried and tested system that's been protecting, you know, millions of miles of journeys since we first started. Yeah. So a call's placed or call or a message or whatever, it's placed it's in emergency it's a data, services. It's a data it's a packet. Data packet. Yeah. What, what does the operator see on their end then, on it's their screen? Great question. I think that, again, um, we've done some films over the years in terms of um, what happens in, in um, a regional ambulance service. So our service is connected directly into the BT-909 emergency yeah. system. So our data goes into their system electronically uh, which brings up all the information within what's called ISEC. Um, it's, it's the universal system that all ambulance services um, are connected to. Um, BT will call regional ambulance service because they'll know where the rider is. Yeah. That information goes straight into the CAD, which is on the regional ambulance services computers. And they can bring up any information that they want. If they see there's some medical information, they can take that information. And they've got all of that data to tell the paramedic what they need to know because we know where the, where the rider so, is. So what do they see, like a, a crash alert sort of message? And yeah. is it with, with the riders, any medical history yeah. they, they've added into the app, yeah. um, their location, obviously, yeah. and then the phone number, and I guess then they can try yeah. and call, call back and see. It's all about giving the paramedic as much information before dispatch. Because if, you, if you're attending, um, you know, we, we get people who've got their own weird medication or, you know, are, are allergic yeah, to penicillin. Yeah. Yeah. So if a paramedic has that information before they attend it, it's all about being better informed. Another thing people worry about, and, and it's the same with mine, if I'm running, say, Google Maps on my phone, it really drains the battery. And if you obviously, if you've got to have the phone, ideally have the phone on your person and not mounted on the bike, yeah. potentially on charge, yeah. what, what's the battery consumption so, like? It's a really good one. We, we um, you know, back in the early days when phone batteries weren't as, as, as good, we would always recommend taking a battery pack. Um, I mean, I, I do anyway because I, I tend to charge up my corners yeah. and things, but now with modern batteries, um, you know, they're, they're not having a big, big impact that they used to. Plus, we changed the way that we record route data. We record it as GPX files now. Right. So that takes less memory on the phone, takes less power. Um, so we've improved it that, in, in that way. But also, if you don't want to record the journey and you just want to be safe, then there's an option just to protect only. Right. And that yeah. uses yeah. literally no battery. Because yeah. all it's doing is, 
it's monitoring the GPS. Uh, okay, so uh, yeah, I've, I've seen the options where you can mm. record your ride or just, yeah. so if you go protect only, yeah. is, a, is a much greater battery yeah, consumption. Yeah, we, we created it when we started working with the, um, the blood service, uh, the blood bikers. Um, and they were like, well, look, I don't want to record the hospital journeys. Yeah. I just want to put it on. And we had guys running it 12 hour shifts. Um, because it, it literally just sits there and listens. Yeah. Okay. Um, and if, if there's an impact, then it uses the last known GPS point anyway. So it's very, very efficient. You're right. Um, we've just done some work with um, in, in Australia with the uh, blood bikers in Australia. We're, we're supporting those guys. And they're out, you know, 12, 13, 14 hours out in the middle of the night. And, and it's, it's been able to create, a, you know, part of the service where they don't have to worry about battery. We would just want to try and protect as many motorcyclists across across the world because we can say that now but we've got a job of work to do to, to kind of inform people what we're about because there are other services that have come online now there is yeah. other, other apps that are trying to do what we do but they're not connected as we are directly and they're not accredited like we are um, and we don't send to friends and family because that's they don't yeah, want that. Yeah, but my wife would if she got an alert, you know, she, I, I'd, I'd say no, I don't, you know, I'd, I'd call her from the hospital later on, you know, yeah. <laughs> that, yeah, I wouldn't yeah, want to worry, worry her, and, you know. And that's, that's what's different about us, we, we from day one we consulted yeah. and we, we worked with, we actually, some of the Euro pro, European projects that we work on with Ducati and, and BMW and the rest of them is that we've been responsible for um, the standardisation for rider base systems yeah. across Europe as part of a big European Commission project. So we're specialists in what we do. So we get invited to help formalise that because yeah. we know what we're doing. Yeah. You know, we're, we're, we're heavily regulated. But again, people don't don't appreciate that. That's, that I mean, that's where the detail is really, isn't it? It's yeah, all very well just having too. an app which will tell you, you you've yeah. had a crash, but it's all that back end stuff. Exactly. Is. We're not trying to ram this down people's throats no. and say you, you should have this. It's look, consider we're here. You know, it's a bit of an insurance. Yeah. Um, it's three ninety nine a month. Yeah. Or actually, if you buy online, it's um, it's only thirty six pound a year. You save twenty five percent. Really? Um, oh, brilliant! Well, thank you very much. Andy. No, I pleasure. Appreciate yeah, your time. Yeah, yeah. Thanks so much indeed. We should be going around the uh, Silverstone. Well, I don't That's know if you can hear it on the camera, guys, <laughs> but there's a Ducati track day on, so uh, we're yeah. going to uh, suit up. I'm, I'm going to um, take that. <laughs> well, no, I'm a bit scared of that. But uh, <laughs> you take the multi. I'll take I'll the Panigale. <laughs> Sorted. Excellent. No, thanks for your time. No problem. Right, Thanks, Andrew. Thank you.